All right. We are now recording this meeting, so that way uh, those of you who are not able to make it on the live presentation can see this in replay. So we're going to be talking about the seven-step listing process brought to you by CSFirst.com. My name is Hernan Cias. I'm a Harris Certified Real Estate Coach. I have my cell phone number here, uh, 619-884-4915, just in case we have any brokers listening that would like some in-office training for their their agents. Uh, we do that as well. We also have a daily podcast called Business Bros where you can get a lot more information on a daily basis, some more motivational, uh, practical, tactical skills that we go through on the daily podcast. And then, of course, Tim and Julie have their own real estate coaching radio of which uh, I am a certified coach on, and they have a daily podcast that they put out with a bunch of great content as well. So we have a bunch of information here that we like to give away to make sure that we are producing top-notch listing agents. So without further ado, I want to jump into this process. All right. Um, I want to be clear, first of all, that this is a proven way of producing listing leads consistently. Now, you must follow the process consistently to have the best results, but you know, if you do do the process uh, from step one through step seven consistently on a daily basis, you will achieve the results that a lot of our listing agents have achieved. Now, remember, the best agents in the real estate industry have been and always will be listing agents. So if you want to be one of the top-notch agents in our in our industry, you need to become or increase your skills as a listing agent. So let's start off with the reasons why you got into real estate in the first place. Right? Why did you get into real estate in the first place? I can guarantee you it wasn't to win awards. It wasn't to build big teams, even though many of you have done so. Right? It wasn't to be transactional. You didn't want to get just numbers to pop in. You know, I sold 100 homes. That wasn't really what you were into. You didn't do it to put a billboard with your picture on it or put your face on, on bus, uh, bus benches. None of those things were the reason that you really got into real estate in the first place. You probably got into real estate because you wanted a sense of freedom. And in order to do that, you need to have control over your time and your cash flow. And it really, and really, that is a definition of you becoming rich. Our particular definition is when your money works for you and you no longer work for your money. So in real estate, I've never heard of anybody in real estate making it rich, not a single agent. There are a ton of agents that made a lot of money in real estate, but the real estate business is not what made them rich. It's the profits that they earned from real estate reinvested into cash producing assets where their money worked for them and they no longer had to work for their money. That is the process of being rich. And that only happens if you have a business that is profitable, sustainable, and scalable. And that comes from becoming a listing agent. So imagine what your business would be like if you focused your business on being a listing agent. If you had a proven system that you woke up to every single day, knowing exactly what you had to do and knowing the expected results, I mean, what would your life be like if you had that in place? Luckily for you, that's what we're going to go over today. So we are, uh, our, our, industry, our uh, coaching program, Harris Real Estate Coaching, we're best known for giving you practical and tactical information so that we can get you into action so you can be of service to more people and make more money as a result. So we're not really the sugar coating. We're not going to give you stuff that's fluffy or feel-good type information here. We're, we're a straight shot type of organization. We want to get you moving, to get you into action so that you're moving in the right direction. So, in order to understand that, I need you to accept the following phrase. I need you to accept the fact that if you want to last in real estate, you have to list. You have to list to last, right? You have to become a real estate listing agent in order for you to sustain a long-term successful real estate practice. Now, this, is, uh, this doesn't have to be something that you aspire to later on in your career. Any new agent can be a listing agent. There's no need to pay your dues or anything like that. I know you might have walked into a broker's office before and they might have told you, hey, you know what, rookie, you got to start at the bottom. You got to work with buyers and get those buyers to buy homes. And then when those buyers you know, become sellers, then you'll have a listing practice. And that's just not necessarily true. You don't have to go that route. Any new agent, if they have a system in place, if they follow a process, can become a listing agent. So remember, listings are mental labor while working with buyers is physical labor. Buyers buyers 
take your physical effort to do things, whether you have to go and drive a buyer to go see a home and then show them the actual home, open the door, answer their questions, get them in the car, drive to another home, open the door, answer their questions, show them. And then when you're done with that buyer, you go on and work with another one. And let's say you do get one in contract, then you got to show um, the appraiser and you got to open the house for inspections and you got to come back for second inspections or second appraisals. Those are all physical labor type things. But while working with a, with a, as a listing agent, well, those, those are more mental labor. So let's talk about a little bit of those. <clears throat> so you can handle more listing business than buyer business once you understand the process. So how many listings do you think you can handle at once? If you had a good process in mind, you can alone without any, any other help, maybe you can do about 10 listings, right? You can probably handle about 10 listings on your own without any additional help. But flip that over to the other side, how many buyers do you think you can handle alone? And now, if you had a very good process and you, you had a good calendar set, you could probably work with three buyers at one time. And if you're super awesome and super dedicated, maybe up to five. But the limited, you're limiting yourself on the type of business. There's just not enough time in the day for you to show more than three people properties throughout the day, right? You just don't have enough hours in the day. So if you have to focus your attention on the two sides, on one of the sides – uh, in the business, why not focus your attention on the listing side where you can handle more business, you can make more money, you can help more people. Being a listing agent requires education, it requires skill, it requires polish, motivation, and perseverance more than it does on the buyer side. The buyer side is very much more a social event, so you kind of want to do these things with the buyer, whereas on the listing side, it requires that you have that you elevate your skills, that you that you polish your presentation, these sorts of things. And we tend to put those away uh, in the afterburner, which is why many people don't become listing agents. Listing agents make more money, more consistently, and with less stress. If you want control over your weekends again, you want to limit how much you feel the pressure on each particular deal, it, it requires that you become a pretty much a kick-ass listing agent. So you need to, to in order to be a really good listing agent, you need to develop the mindset of a listing agent, right? And listing agents know how to constantly generate leads. They know how to follow up. They know how to pre-qualify them. They understand how to present in a way that they take the listing. They understand how to negotiate in a way that they sell the listing and ultimately close the deal. Now, they do this in a way that the seller trusts and refers them why? Because they're professional. They have a system that they wake up to every day. They follow the process every single day with every single client. So every client gets the same experience, right? Because they have the same experience, they want to refer their friends so that they too have the same experience. So when, when a listing agent has the mindset of, I am an awesome listing agent, they do things the same way in a way that a seller trusts them, and then the seller will also refer them business. Listing agents work with more than repeat business. They successfully help colder leads due to their high level of skill and confidence. If you have high level of skill and high level of confidence, you're going to want to talk to more people about real estate on a daily basis because you're ready to answer questions. You're ready to take on any type of objective that comes, objective that comes your way. So you have that confidence, you have that skill, and then you're going to go out and close more deals. Now, fact. Let me share a fact with you. Many agents do the same amount of business every year or year over year because they're dependent on what comes to them naturally. They're dependent on that, you know, that friend that sent a referral that, you know, they had to buy right away or um, you had a, a friend that dropped it in your lap and it was an easy close, right? Those transactions come and you get one or two or three of these a year. Those things come naturally, but you try to find the easy button. You try to find the easy way to go around and get some more of these deals, and that's where you end up falling off. To go to the next level, you must learn to not just work with people you know, right, your own little circle of influence, but you must also work with people you don't know. The easy button is where too many agents fall uh, prey to trying to find the shortcut, trying to find the way of getting out of their, of avoiding getting out of their comfort zone, and as a result, they have mediocre results, right? So let's go on to the listing agent seven P's. Profit comes from previewing, pre-qualifying, preparing, the pre-listing package, also known as the PLP, and a polished professional presentation. If you wanted an extra P in there, prayer doesn't hurt either. 
So having the mindset of a of becoming a listing agent, hopefully at this point I got you to the to the mindset that okay, yes, be if I wanted to be successful in this business, I need to become a listing agent. So now let's talk about these seven steps of what a listing agent does regularly, professionally, consistently to get the results that they're looking for. So step number one, a listing agent generates leads. If you generate, you do not have to tolerate, right? Now, let me say that again. If you generate, you do not have to tolerate. What do you have to tolerate? You don't have to tolerate the ups and the downs in the market if you know how to generate leads. You don't have to tolerate ups and downs in your cash flow if you know how to generate leads. You don't have to tolerate the next shiny thing, right? What are, what are these other agencies promoting? Let's hop on Facebook. Let's do Instagram ads. Let's do anything that's pretty easy to do. You don't have to tolerate adult torture that real estate has become rather than the blessing that it actually is, right? You intuitively already know that, the, that most of the things that you're being sold are crap, Right when Zillow sends you gives you a call and they're telling you to buy this area and it's exclusive for you in this market, you know those leads are crap. Why are you spending money on those? Buyer leads are the easiest thing to get, and we're going to show you here as a listing process how to generate these leads. If you're looking for buyer leads, I'll show you how to get unlimited number of leads. All right, so think about where the money's made though. The money's not made in these social networks. They're not made there. The money is made by helping people, and it comes from the control of being a listing agent. So I need you to focus all your energies right here on this part. I need you to be, be a powerful listing agent. I need you to have your mindset in becoming a powerful listing agent so that when someone asks you, what do you do? You can tell them, I specialize in selling homes for people. By the way, who do you know that I should be helping sell their home in this market? That's the type of thing that I want you to come out of uh, knowing how to say. I want you to have the confidence to just ask that question almost every single time when someone asks you that question that they're always going to ask you, like, how's the market today? Hey, you know, when someone asks you something like, what do you do? You'll have that answer. Do not, do not delegate the things that put you in direct contact with the people who are selling their homes. Far too often we see agents that delegate the things that are putting them in front of the clients, right? They delegate the lead generation. They delegate the follow-up. They delegate the presentation part. And as a result, their business suffers. They're not able to close the deals. Follow these steps without, without skipping one. And you, you too will have success, right? Don't delegate the things that are putting you in front of the sellers, right? So let's move into this lead generation thing. So remember the spokes on the wheel, okay? Picture a wheel. It's just a circle, right? And the spokes go across the circle, across the diameter. And each spoke, the more spokes you have, the stronger your wheel. So if you're thinking about the spokes on the wheel analogy, Lead generation isn't achieved by one magic silver bullet. There is no one thing that's going to take your business to the next level and miraculously you're going to make all kinds of money. There is no one spoke wonder, right? Your your wheel is never going to be strong with one spoke. If something were to happen and that spoke breaks, your wheel is done for. You should implement at least five spokes of lead generation. The more spokes you have on your wheel, the stronger your wheel is going to be. Now, these spokes, you need to focus your attention on the spokes that are skills-based, that require your daily effort, not the passive-based ones, not mailers. You know, I, when we talk to clients all the time, they say, I got a number of spokes. I, I do the social media. I send out mailers. Those are all great, right? Mailers, you know what I do with my mail? It goes in the trash. Most of the time, all the mail that I get goes in the trash. What about social media? I post something and guess what? I get a thumbs up. So if that's what you want to feel like, cool, let me give you a thumbs up right now. Ding! There's your like. But those are not focused spokes. Those are not skill-based things that require you to do your daily effort, that, that require your daily effort. The highest paid and most respected people in the world have always been salespeople. Now, I know what you're thinking. What about, you know, religious people? Let's well, talk about Jesus, for example. Jesus was one of the highest, uh, well, I can't say paid, but he was a salesperson, right? He had to sell people on his religion. He had to sell people on meeting him, leaving everything behind. Besides, if you even want to put it as a monetary thing, his religion sold the most books ever of anyone, right? We know that as the Bible. But it doesn't matter what it is that you do. If you are in sales, 
you are being of service to more people. And the highest paid, the most respected, because he was very well respected, right, and still is, have always been in sales. You're selling yourself for something. So perfect, purify, pursue until you're the best at each one of these spokes. Now, that requires you to do what you don't want to do when you don't want to do it, but you have to do it at the highest level. So this means... Normally, it means that you're going to do more prospecting than you've thought of before. You're going to have to do more marketing than you than you thought was necessary. You're going to have to do more lead follow-up than you think you should be doing. If you struggle with lead generation, you need to get help. Real estate doesn't have to be a feast or famine. No more roller coaster income. Commit to ending the cash spurts in your business and get into cash flow, and it starts with lead generation. Now, I, I, I don't know if I told you this, but... All of you are going to get uh, six free books, and I'll tell you toward the end of the presentation how you're going to get your six free books. One of the books that you're going to get is called 25 Surefire Lead Generators, and these are free ways to generate leads. This is how you're going to help get your business to the next level. All right, so this is in the lead generation, and I'll tell you about the, those six books and one of them which will be your 25 Surefire Lead Generators. All right, let's move on to step number two. So that was generate the lead. Step number two is Follow up with urgency. Now, you're going to want to follow our 18 follow-up rules, right? And and it starts with understanding urgency. Never, ever end the day without following up on 100% of your leads. Never. doesn't matter if they came in via voicemail. doesn't matter if they came in via text or online. Follow up. Buyer leads our leads, uh, buyer leads are listing leads in buyer's clothing. So don't blow off buyers just because you have too many buyers, quote unquote, right? Use scripts like, hey, which home in the area are you planning on selling? There's too many times when you put an open house sign and you have people that come in that are probably homeowners around the neighborhood and they could be curious, but they could also be wondering what this house is going to be listed at because they're thinking about selling their own home. So they may be sellers, uh, in buyer's clothing. So make sure you don't blow off any lead and use proper scripts like which home in the area do you plan on selling. Urgency equals abundance. So don't sit on your leads. The more leads you follow up on with urgency, the more you are going to convert to appointments. But remember this key fact, okay? Because too much emphasis is placed on leads. Zillow does it all the time when they sell you leads. Leads are worthless. They have zero value. Appointments, however, have value. And the only way you convert a lead to an appointment is to follow up. You must follow up with urgency. Furiously fast lead follow-up is what we say at the uh, at the Harris, Harris Coaching Program. So furiously fast lead follow-up. Let me give you an example. Uh, when we have a listing, we coach our clients to put a 1-800-HOME-HOTLINE, a writer on top of the sign, and it'll say something like, call the 1-800 number, for 24-hour information on this property. I'm sure you guys have used these in the past, or um, if you haven't, you should. So what happens? When a client is driving by, they see the sign, they call on it. They call on the number on the rider to get information, and they hear a recording that you put together. It's something like, hey, this is a three-bedroom, two-bath home, 2,800 square feet, priced within the mid-400s, whatever the information is for that particular property. But what you get as a listing agent, you get a text message and an email alert that someone called on your sign, and it's immediate. And it also includes the phone number that they're calling from. So when we mean, when we mean furiously fast lead follow-up, we're talking about you need to get on the phone right away and call that number back. And every time, it's funny because it's very consistent, every time you call back, you hear agents tell the same story. They call back and they're like, hey, this is Hernan with uh, CS First Real Estate. Uh, every time a client calls on one of our signs, we like to give them a call back, see if they have any questions. And the client is always shocked. They're like, uh, is, is this a real person? Or, oh, um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm standing in front of the property. The fact that you called back right away increases the probability of you working with that client. It shows that you're professional. Not just that, the conversion rate on the on the calls for the for those types, right? The ones that are standing in front of your door, they've already decided this is the neighborhood I want to be in or they're thinking this is the home that's 
that's comparable to the one I want to sell. These are higher conversion calls than any other type that's going to come your way because they're already in the area looking at one of your listings. So take advantage of those types of things and make sure you furiously fast lead follow up with every single one of your leads. Never end the day without calling back 100% of your leads. All right, let's move on to number three. Step number three is pre-qualify for motivation and time frame. You must pre-qualify yeah. 100. You must, uh, sorry about that. You must pre-qualify 100% of your leads, both buyers and sellers, 100% of the time using buyer and seller pre-qualification scripts. 100% of the time. Do not use different rules for different types of people. Don't say, all right, uh, I'm not going to use a script this time because it's my mom or because it's my friend from high school. Or No, 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 no. You are a professional. Right? You do this same thing every single time, every single buyer or seller. It's like the McDonald's example, right? If I bought a McDonald's hamburger in San Diego and I bought a McDonald's ham hamburger in New York, it doesn't matter across the country, the hamburger is going to taste the same because I know that McDonald's professionally prepares the hamburgers the same way. Same practice has to be as part of your business. You have to be able to uh, consistently pre-qualify 100% of your leads, both buyers and sellers, using a pre-qualification script that our coaching program can provide, provide for you. So don't use different, rule, different rules for different types of people. Always, always know the following prior to your listing appointment. So your intent when you, when you follow up is to set the appointment. Now you're going to pre-qualify for motivation and time, so you always need to know these following things. You need to know the seller's time frame. You need to know the seller's motivation. You need to know if they are buying as well. So if this is a listing, right, you need to know if they're also going to buy. Because if they're going to buy in your state or in another state, wouldn't it be nice to have a referring agent where you can earn some commission on? Or if they're buying in another neighborhood that you tend to work on, it'd be nice to double dip that type of sale. So you need to ask these questions, the seller's motivation, the seller's time frame, are they buying, are they speaking with other agents, and if so, how many and how did they decide? Now this question is tough because you always feel weird about asking this question. Your ego is going to stop you from asking this question, but you need to know if you're competing. If you got this lead as a referral, right, maybe you're, you're friends with, uh, with somebody who's friends with the husband, but and the husband got you know maybe two or three referrals, and the wife got maybe two or three referrals. How are they deciding how you know which agent they're going to work with? You need to ask these questions up front. You need to be prepared to answer those questions. So uh, the last thing you need to know is the price that they have in mind, right? You need to know what they're thinking. Sometimes you might have an objection there. The the other way to go about asking rather than just asking, hey, what price do you have in mind? Because they might come back with something like, you know, that's what we have you coming out for to tell us. Well, you can ask something more along the lines, well, what properties in the area have you seen and what things do you like about that property or don't like about that property? And that, that will kind of guide you in the direction of what properties they're looking at that it might be comparable to theirs and have a price point in mind, something that they've already seen. So a little work around how you do that. Remember, some people are very uncomfortable with scripts. I don't know why. It's, it's, uh, it's more like a conversational outline. You don't have to memorize a script word for word. You can, and that will work too, but you don't have to. What we want you to do is really to internalize the script, understand what the objective is, and use it to pre-qualify. So whether you use the script or not, as long as you're internally um, internalizing the script and you're asking these questions, you're looking for motivation, time frame, if they're speaking with other agents, how many and how did they decide, and then the price that they have in mind, then you're doing your pre-qualification uh, up front. All right, so let's move on to step number four. All right, step number four is we're going to send the pre-listing package. All right, the pre-listing package, this thing is amazing. Always send your powerful, proven pre-listing package before every appointment. No exceptions. FedEx, drop off, any way you want to do it, but you need to send it. Now, just because no one in my office, quote unquote, no one in my office is doing this, right, doesn't make it right. It makes it even more important and more obvious why you should be the one doing it. You'll stand out and make and take more listings. Take your time when you're creating your pre-listing package. Make sure it's sign, it, it shines. It's one of those. Uh, it's one probably one of the most important tools you'll ever use. Think about and, and here's why. Most agents, 
right? Live in fear of that question that they get when they go to a listing presentation, which is, what makes you different, right? I mean, we all put signs in the yards. We all put it in the MLS, right? We all are real estate agents. We, most of us are realtors, right? All these things may, are the same. What sets us apart? How are we going to do things different? And if you're putting the time into your pre-listing package, right, if you're putting that time in, the pre-listing package that we create in our organization is, is I kid you not, it's like magic. All the objection, uh, all the objection questions that you might get in a listing presentation are inside this pre-listing package. So when you get ready to go to an appointment, when to, to go on this presentation, most of the questions that the, the seller has are already answered for them. They're built into that pre-listing package. And remember in the pre-qualifying section where we talked about um, are they speaking with any other agents or any other agents uh, in competition with you for this listing, right? Inside the pre-listing package is a set of questions. And these questions we're going to talk to you here in a little bit are going to actually do the work for you and prevent other agents from getting the listings, right? So don't take this for, for granted, right? You have to build your, your pre-listing package with care. And our, our coaching program already has a uh, template that you can use to help you do that. We even have a service. They, I think it's like 200 bucks or something like that, maybe 300 bucks. I'm not exactly sure. And we'll have somebody design and create your pre-listing package for you, right? So you don't have to even think about that, but you must, you must absolutely have a pre-listing package. So our ours is designed to answer every objection and concern that the seller has, or it even answers questions that the seller doesn't even know they have yet. It's answering it ahead of time. We have many agents that have never listed a house before. They're in a competitive market. They are going up against grizzled veterans. And because they followed the process, right, they've been doing all these steps. They followed the process. They pre-qualified. They followed the scripts. They sent the PLP. And guess what? They got the listing, right? Questions like, well, what about your listing terms or what about your commission or what about your marketing plan or what about your track record or what about your price ranges? All those questions are already answered within your pre-listing package. You're giving, we're giving you the tools that, um, that are going to make you competitive and be dominant in your marketplace. Now, let's just face the facts. You compete right? You are competing for this listing. You might have other agents around you that you're friends with, but when it comes down to brass tacks, you compete. And if you compete, you must be prepared to win. And the PLP is the thing that's going to help you cross the finish lines. It's what's going to get that done for you. Cool? Let's move on. So send the pre-listing package. Now, after you've sent the pre-listing package, the next thing you're going to need to do is you're going to have to call and confirm the appointment. Always confirm and always show up, even if you just left a message for confirmation. Don't start making things up in your head. Don't start making excuses why you can't go or why you shouldn't go. Confirm and go. Don't let your ego stop you. If they don't, show, if they're not home or for whatever reason, that's you know that's something you can work with later. You confirm the appointment and you show up. No excuses. Just go. Okay. Always ask if they received the PLP and if they opened it. So when you confirm and you have them on the phone, make sure while you while they're on the phone, you're going to confirm the date and time, right? And then you're going to say, hey, by the way, I sent you a package. Um, did you get it? And uh, can you open it? And there, you'll be surprised how often you hear them open it right over the phone. You know, I want to make sure you got, you want to say something like, I want to make sure you got the information that I placed inside. So in the pre-listing package, remember I told you we're going to fend off some uh, competitive agents here. So in the pre-listing package, while you have the seller on the phone, while you're confirming, you're going to say, hey, inside the package, there's a list of 20 questions that I, uh, that I have for you in case you want to interview uh, the other agents, right? You're going to want to have something to, to ask them, some you know, knowledgeable questions about, about being a real estate agent. So inside, there are some questions. Now, these questions, right, if this is between us now, so the, between me and uh, you other agents listening out here. These questions are designed to put pressure on your competition. You are giving the seller a script that they're going to use to beat out your competition for you. Questions like, hey, what's your list to sell price ratio? Most agents don't even know what the list to sell price ratio is, much less what the number actually is. In case you don't know, by the way, it's the difference between the list price and what it actually sold for. 
So it's like, say for example, you listed a home for $100,000 and it sold for 97000 then you have a 97% list-to-sell price ratio or, you know, you, you sell your homes for 97% of the value. Um, so that's that's what the list to sell price ratio is. And the nice thing about the questions that you provide in the PLP, not only does it give the question, it gives your answer, and it un- and then we also have the MLS average answer. So that way, when they're sitting in front of this this agent and you know your your competition essentially, and they ask a question, and the agent has no idea how to answer that question. They look at the answer that you provided. They look at the average in the MLS, and then they're trying to. Uh, and, and they look at the agent, the agent's going to try to BS their way out of it, right? They're going to try to come up with some weird answer to try to skirt around it. Put yourself in that situation. You would want to try to, I don't know, maybe excuse yourself and leave and, you know, sheepishly with your tail be tucked between your legs. But the the seller is doing this for you. The, you're providing them the questions that they need to get your uh, to get your competition out of the way, and then you come in and close the deal, right? So, Make sure that you always have and always send your pre-listing package. <clears throat> your seller is going to is going to know whether the agents are BSing their way through it. And if you pro- follow the process, if you do this process every single time the same way, doesn't matter whether you're competing or not, you're going to be increasing the ability of you closing this uh closing the sale or getting the the seller to list with you. Be professional. Do the same way every single time. Let's move on to number six. Now we got present, or in other words, it's showtime. But I want you to understand that the presentation actually began way back when when you converted this prospect into an appointment. Uh, The better you are at the beginning, the higher your chances are of actually taking the listing. So that's why the process is so important. That's why it's important for you to not just skip, to not skip steps, to go through every single uh, process, every single step, the same way every single time. Use our powerful and proven listing presentation. Anytime you show up to a house, don't wing it. Even with past clients or your sphere of influence or your referrals or any slam dunk appointments, it doesn't matter. They deserve your utmost respect and professionalism. So do not skip steps. Preview the competition and pending listings so you can be as accurate as possible in pricing. Pricing it right the first in the first place is going to prevent you from having to deal with price reduction conversations later. However, if you do find yourself in a situation where you do have to have the price reduction conversation, we have scripts that you can use to get those to get those uh, conversations going at the same time, right? So, a uh, few little talking points here. Sellers, just just to throw it out there. Remember, I told you no fluff, no nothing. I'm just going to throw it straight out there for you. Sellers do not want to meet with you. Sorry to break your heart, but sellers do not want to meet with you. They don't want tension of arguing price or arguing commission. Most people don't deal with salespeople. They don't, right? They don't want to deal with the salesperson. That's why there's so much tension when you walk over to a presentation, right? When you get there, there's always that weird awkward silence because they know they're about to get quote unquote sold, right? <clears throat> so the nice thing about our process is that they're actually thankful that you sent over the answers to the questions. Now they don't have to worry about arguing price or arguing commissions. They know exactly what you are doing, exactly how you do it, your history. Everything is perfectly in order. If they're a referral, they know the experience that their friends have and they're experiencing the same type of thing, right? There will be no tension with our system. Essentially, this presentation, this show time, is nothing more than a paperwork appointment. Right? The nature of your relationship with the seller is different because you had the pre-listing package. Remember I told you it's magic? It's going to release the tension out of the room. It's going to help you get more listings more often. Working with buyers is a social experience. So you're afraid to be like that stereotypical car salesman, right? You, you, you would hate to be that guy that everybody stays away from where they walk down the dealership street and they don't want to talk to that person because they know they're just being sold. Well, guess what? You're not that typical salesperson. You're not that stereotype. Our system makes the process easier for the seller, and thus we makes it easier for you. We're lowering the tension. That's the intention, right? And if you use, uh, on top of that, if you use our Sharpie clothes for your presentation along with the proven home selling system, 
you're going to remove all the stress. Sharpie Close, you got to learn about that directly on our coaching program, but we tell you how to walk through the presentation so that you remove all the stress and just focus on those things that uh, that the seller really wants to get answered, and then you just get some paperwork done. All right, step number seven, close. A, B, C, always be closing. Don't walk out the door saying, okay, I'll follow up with you in a few days. Instead, leave with signed documents in one step whenever possible. If you're walking out the door saying, okay, I'll follow up in a few days, chances are you skipped a step. You try to cut corner somewhere, and that's why you're not getting this deal closed. Do not skip a step. Follow the process every single time the same way. Remember that the definition of close is just a logical ending to a great presentation. And your presentation started way back in lead generation. So it's far easier to close when you follow all the previous steps. Don't get caught up in the word close, right? The close has such a negative connotation. Just remember it's a logical ending to a great presentation. The PLP, the pre-listing package, and the proving home selling system, our presentation, along with the six previous steps, have done all the hard work for you. Nine out of ten times, uh, if they have not signed it's usually because of price, and you probably went over the price section too quickly. And we detail it out in our in our proven home selling system how to do the presentation so you don't graze over the price section. So follow the process, and you'll find success over and over again. Now, once you do have the close the, the listing agreement with you, don't drop the ball. All right, you are still presenting until the seller gets the check at closing. So follow your listing plan of action, which is also detailed in your pre-listing package. Strive to underperform and over-deliver. Use our seller 12-week communication plan, especially if listings are starting to sell, uh, are not selling as quickly in your market. And we know that in San Diego, for example, the market time is extending. We're starting to hit a different type of market. We're moving into a buyer's market. If you didn't know, now you know. So we're moving into a buyer's market. You're going to need to have communication set up with your seller for a longer period of time. And our seller 12-week communication plan can help get that done for you. So remember... <clears throat> What would your life be like if you followed this process daily? I mean, really think about that. What kind of life would you have if you had 10 listings at all time? 10 listings at all time. We want you to accept the fact that if you want to meet or exceed your goals, you must become a listing agent. Listings are mental labor. Buyers are physical labor. Buyers, buyer leads will come in abundance if you're a listing agent. Being a great listing agent takes skills, practice, experience, and perseverance. So commit to being the best and you will soon feel more freedom and less stress. Right? How many buyers can you work with at the same time? How many sellers can you work with at the same time? The lifestyle of a listing agent is much more flexible as it is scalable. It is, as it's more scalable than, uh, than working with buyers. So lastly, I want you to ask yourself these questions. What steps must you take so that you're following 100% of the seven-step listing process? What do you need to do yourself so that you get there, right? What would happen if you did those things? What would your goals be like if you could take very close to 100% of the listing appointments that you went in on, that you went on, thanks to the PLP, right? Thanks to the pre-listing package. Would you prospect more if you had a pre-listing package? If you had more skills and more confidence? Would you be more urgent with your lead follow-up? If you knew exactly what to say, how to say, and when to say it. And the better your listing skills are, the bigger you can think. Hopefully, you're going to start thinking a little bigger. Set your bar a little higher. Get to where you want to go. So how do you get those six free books that we talked about at the beginning? One of them being the 25 Surefire Lead Generators. The other one that's a really big one is your real estate treasure map. This is your real estate business plan. It'll help you come up with that magic number so you know exactly how many listings you need to have at all times to meet or exceed your goals. All right, so we, we have six free books, in, including Think and Grow Rich for Real Estate Agents. So how do you get your six free books? Simple. You go to our website, www.csfirst.com, and in the, uh, in the menus on the top, there's a free coaching call tab. Hover over that, click on the certified uh, Harris Certified Real Estate Coach and enter your information and we'll have one of our new member coaches give you a call. You'll get a free 30-minute coaching call where they're going to help you set up your um, your spokes on a wheel to help you get going and building your business. 
right? And even if you don't decide to go with the coaching program, that's totally okay. We have the daily podcast, The Business Bros, and Tim and Julie's Real Estate Coaching Radio, where you can get a lot of information, and um, and you will get those six books to help put you into action. Remember, goals without actions are just dreams. Stop dreaming about being the agent that you want to be and take action and get out there and do what it is that you got into the business to do. Be of service to more people and go out and make more money. Again, my contact info is below. Remember, uh, we do do presentations inside your office. So if you have uh, some agents that you want to work with and, uh, that want some training, give us a call, set us up, see, uh, send us an email, and we'll get a time to meet with you guys. That's all we got for you guys today. Peace, and I'm out.